Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the Stream Graph. Now, the Stream Graph is developed by Microsoft, and it's very similar to like a stacked area chart, but has a little bit of a wiggle or a stream to it, though you'll hear that term used oftentimes with Stream Graphs, where it has a bit of a flow, and it looks like it's very cognizant of time, and it does work really well when you're looking at data across time. You can see that as an example here on the chart here, where we're looking at different movie types or mo different movie genres by time. And we're going to have a very similar example to that whenever we look at our live example here in a few moments. And what we'll also do is compare and contrast it to a stacked area chart, which is natively available inside of the Power BI desktop. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at where we need to go download the stream graph, how we can import it, and how to use it. All right, so our first stop is going to be at the custom visuals gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, that will take you to the custom visuals gallery that I'm looking at here. And as I slide down here, I'll look for the stream graph, which is located towards the bottom. At least it is right now. The sort order of these can change. All right, so I'll select the stream graph, and you can go ahead and download that custom visual and even have some samples here available as well. Once you download it, though, you'll then go over to the Power BI desktop, and we'll start working on our first example. Now, as I mentioned a few moments ago, the data that we're going to be looking at is movies data, and we're going to be looking specifically at how the language meaning more vulgar language and how it impacts the rating of different movies. And so we'll see different movies and how they're rated and then look at what the amount of language is that, that in each of those movies is. All right, so let's go ahead and do that by going under the Get Data section. They're going to get some of this type of data that I've already pulled in for you. If I select an Excel file, which you should have available at the bottom of the link here of the video. And uh, so I'll scroll down here and I'm looking for this file here called Language and Movies. Okay, so we're looking at kind of vulgar language and uh, how many movies that have vulgar language impact the actual rating of the movie here. All right, so I'll select language and movies, hit open. And once I open that, it'll take me to the navigator pane where I'll see all the spreadsheets that are part of this workbook. In this case, there's only one that's called reason for rating. And so it's going to have a list of all these movies from the 2000s. I kind of at least filtered it down to the 2000s here. And then I can see the rating that was given to it and then the actual kind of indicator if the rating was determined by the language in the movie. So a one indicating yes, the language in the movie was determinate in the actual rating, a zero meaning that it had no determination. It could have been another factor of why this one is an R rating. It could be sex, it could be violence, that sort of thing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit load to take this data into our data model. And the first thing I wanna do is point out to you, if you look at this data, you'll notice that it has a few of these little sigma symbols next to it. Those indicate that those are implicit measures those are number values that are inside of my data set. And because they're numbers, Power BI assumes that we want to aggregate them. Uh, in some cases, that's right. In some cases, that's wrong. In this case, when it comes to year, that's wrong. I don't want to summarize the year value. That doesn't really make any sense. Years are things like 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. I would never want to sum the years. So what I need to do to fix that issue is to select the year, go up to the modeling ribbon on the very top, and from here, I can tell it that I want to change the default summarization from sum to do not summarize because I don't really want to summarize a year. All right, so we've gotten that taken care of. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is to go ahead and show you how the standard stacked area chart works. And then we can walk through some of the other fun things, what we can do with the stream graph. All right, so the standard stacked area chart you'll find right here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this graph and I'll move it and have it take up about half the screen on the right hand side. And what we'll do is we'll plug into it the year, the language indicator here, and we'll say, uh, how about the MPAA rating? All right, so what this is showing us here is all of the movies from the 2000s, how they are rated. So it looks like a lot of R-rated movies here. And then we're also seeing really the indicator that the size of that represents the amount of R-rated movies. So the amount of R-rated movies that have language as the reason why they're R-rated. So 370 of the R-rated movies were R-rated because of the language. Uh, there's one NC-17 one, which is a little blue line that you see on the very bottom here. There's uh, PG-13, 79, and then PG-45 because of the language. Now, what we can do is do a little comparison. This is a standard chart that's already available inside of Power BI, but let's do a comparison with a stream graph, which is the custom visual that we've just downloaded a few moments ago. Now, to import that custom visual, you'll come over to the three ellipses here on the right-hand side in the visualization section, and that allows you to import that custom visual that we downloaded a few moments ago. So I'll select that. It'll give you a little prompt here and say, hey, are you sure you want to import something that's potentially non-Microsoft developed? In this case, it actually is developed by Microsoft. So I'll hit import. 
We'll go find wherever we downloaded that custom visual. I usually recommend putting it in a single spot so it's easy to find. And then I'll even sort this so I can find it a little faster. But I'm looking for the stream graph here. All right, so I've imported the stream graph visual, which you downloaded a few moments ago. I know I selected that a little fast, but you just need to go select wherever you downloaded it and stored it to. And then I usually, again, recommend that you place it in a central spot so you can find it and find any other custom visuals you need. All right, so I'll select the custom visual, and I'm going to add that into my design surface here, like so. And then what I'd like to do is to go ahead and place basically the same data points that we have inside the stacked area chart inside the stream graph this time. So to do that, we'll go ahead and select the same exact things we did a moment ago, the year, the language indicator. Oh, let's look, looks like it's going in a different chart. Let me select that again. There we go, the year, the language indicator, and the rating. And that way we're actually able to see a fairly similar type of chart here that's showing us a comparison here between the standard area chart, stacked area chart, and the stream graph that we just imported from the custom visual gallery. Looks fairly similar. The only gift difference is it has this little wiggle or stream to it which makes it a little bit more flowing. It's a little bit more fluid whenever you look at the data, but it gives you a really interesting perspective on the data. Now, there are a few things you can do to change and customize this stream graph that we're looking at on the left-hand side. This is really the focus of this module on the left-hand side. And some of those things that you can do, you'll find underneath the Format Paintbrush. So if I go over to the Format section here, and let's kind of work our way from the bottom and go up, you see you can add on data labels. So I can flip on data labels here. And you can see in this case, it's putting a data label there for every uh, rating of the movie. So I can see RRRRR show up multiple times. Not really that useful here in this case. So I might turn that off. But just to point out to you, hey, you can change the color of those data labels if you wanted to. You can increase the text size if you wanted to. I'm going to turn those off. I just wanted to point out to you, you have those abilities. You can also change how the legend appears. So the next one up here is the legend. The legend is turned on already. But you can change how the legend appears. So say, for example, I wanted to change the name of the legend. Right here in the legend properties, I can come over here. Let me zoom in on this for you. I could rename the legend and tell it, well, let's not call it MPAA underscore rating. Let's just call it rating. And if I rename it, you'll see it also appears in the top left to be properly renamed for me. You can increase the text size of that if you want. So I bumped up the text size there. You can see that's a little bit easier to read. You can change the text color. And you can also change the position of the legend. So if you don't want it in the top, maybe you want it to appear on the bottom. You can flip it to the bottom. It now shows up in the bottom section of the chart as well. You can make it show up on the center, so you can make it, oop, I clicked away from it for a moment. Let's try that again. I can make it uh, left center. I can make it right center. You have a lot of flexibility with where that, sh that legend shows up. I'm going to leave it on the top. I think it makes sense up there. Uh, and then let's work our way up a little bit more. So the next set of properties we have are the X and Y axes. Uh, here you can turn on the title of the properties. So basically here it's showing you what's the rating. Here's the count of the ratings that we have. Uh, it'll also allow you to see something like if I go back to the properties over here, I can turn that back off and I can take a look at the X axis. It's the same thing. You can turn off or turn on the title. This is basically just adding a title to the horizontal axis that I see here. So it's showing me the years or what I'm looking at here. In this case, it's kind of self-explanatory that those are years. So I can uncheck the title if I don't want to see that. You can also change the color of the titles if you wanted to. I can change the color of the numbers there so it's a little bit more bold it's actually showing in black there it's a little bit better to see or a little easier to see than the gray color that's there by default there we go uh, last piece here that's worth mentioning is underneath the general section uh, obviously you can turn a border on you can turn a border off that's standard in just about every one of these custom visuals uh, but the last piece i want to point out here is underneath the general section of the properties Usually the general section has in it things like the position where you want it to be placed on the design surface. It also allows you to change the size of the visual. Uh, but then in this particular visual, you have this property here called wiggle. And this is uh, oftentimes called wiggle or stream, depending on what, where, where you've uh, gotten the stream graph from. Uh, with Power BI, though, it's going to call it wiggle. Okay? And so if you want to see what this does, basically it turns it into more of a, a, a streaming area chart, a more smoother flowing area chart. You'll notice here, Wiggle is already turned on. If I turn it off, Wiggle kind of flattens out the chart, and it looks very similar to the area chart that we have to the right of it. It's just kind of flattened out, and it's flowing. It's more smooth cut. It doesn't have as sharp edges whenever it has a change in the data. So it's up to you if you want to use that property or turn it off. It's on by default. I'm going to leave it back, turn it back on. Uh, but it's up to you because it does quite a bit change how the, the chart itself looks. Um, it's not as fluid as it was before, but it does still have those smooth cuts instead of the drastic changes like the stacked area chart does. Uh, outside of that, everything else up here in the property section is pretty typical that you would see in all of the other 
visuals, you have things like the title you can adjust. I can increase the title size. I can move the title to the middle. You have those sorts of things you can adjust that every one of the visuals has uh, built into them as well. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the streaming graph. It's a very interesting chart type that you can use or graph that you can use. And I look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module.